Hey folks, what's up? Ashish here for Technospot.net and in this video I'm going to compare Moto E second generation with Xiaomi's latest budget phone Redmi 2. Now both of these phones are priced like at 699 and it's a, both a pretty decent phone but there's some kind of differences that will make you choose between uh, both of these phones and you're going to love to know the details definitely. So I'm not going to do a very uh, split by split uh, comparison, but I'm going to take the major ones. So the first one will be build, design, touch and display. So when it comes to build and design, Redmi 2 is thin and light, while Moto A is thick and heavy. Now, if you actually compare the weight, it's stiffer only by 15 grams, but the kind of thickness Moto E has it uh, makes a lot of difference when you are handling it. So let's say if you are putting it in your pocket, Redmi 2 goes in very easily compared to Moto E. Now, Moto E for some might give a sense that it has got strong build quality compared to Redmi 2. That is a natural thing and you might just like the thickness itself. Now, Moto E when it comes to display is a 4.5 inch phone with 960 by 540 PX display while Redmi 2 is 4.7 inch with 720p display. Now difference might not sound very significant, but when it comes to a watching a movie which is of 720p and when you play game and you watch something which has graphics, it does make a lot of difference. Now touch experience is same on both the phone. That makes Redmi 2 win over Moto E for being thin, light and carry a better display. Specs battle. While Moto E2 second generation still sticks with the old Qualcomm Snapdragon 200 processor uh, which is being used in every other phone, low-end phone, Redmi 2 has gone ahead and embraced a Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 processor. This generation of processor enables Redmi to have 4G LE support on both same. You have you can support a camera with 1080p, then you have Adreno 306 GPU which facilitates 3D gaming with support the latest API. There is also a tight integration and support for Qualcomm Quick Charge 1 and 2.0 which can help you uh, uh, charge your phone really really quick. Now what really makes both of these phones differ from each other is the camera. Now support of camera makes Redmi 2 8 megapixel rear and 2 megapixel front casing camera stand out and take down Moto E by power which only has a 5 megapixel camera with a front VGA camera. Now Redmi 2 takes great low light picture using the BSI sensor it comes along with and its front camera can even do a great video calling as it supports 720p SD video. This is something important because general consumer when they even for a low budget phone would want a better camera, a flash and something that can take a lot of good pictures. Redmi 2 wins hands down here. So you can see that the overall hardware configuration of Redmi 2 is much better than Moto E. General performance. Now for some reason Moto E, the model which I had, has issues with the software running on it. It had lots of problem, uh, random touch issues, heating here and there. But when I asked my peer here, like people I know on internet do the same job, they say the issue wasn't there. It's kind of dicey, but I mean, it's there at least for some models. So you need to be really careful on that. Now, on the contrary, Redmi 2 has no issue whatsoever. Using apps like Facebook, WhatsApp, gaming, Twitter, browsing, the internet, consuming videos and listening to music was really, really smooth. I will, though there's a huge chance that Moto E, not all devices have the problem. It could have happened with Redmi also. But keeping my experience up, Redmi 2 actually wins here. Software. Now, what kind of user you are? Are you like a geek and very technical heavy? Then I look for customization on your phone. Then Redmi 2 is something you will love because it comes with MIUI 6, which is built over Android 5.0 Lollipop. And it makes the whole experience different, make your phone stand out and you know gives a lot of productive feature which you are going to really really love it has got 64 bit of hardware and overall that boosts up the performance now moto e on the other hand 
is for those who don't care if there's a customization here. Now this doesn't make a huge difference because the stock Android, Android Lollipop 5.0 is really amazing. It it doesn't even feel like, uh, you know, it doesn't feel like the old Android. It's completely the new Android. It's got a fluid, uh, it's got fluidity at a very high level and a lot of things are there that you will still cherish on 5.0. So on software wise, it's still a tie. It's going to be a matter of choice, but yep, that's the thing. Gaming, now another phones are bad when it comes to gaming, right from casual games like Temple Run 2 and all those stuff to Asphalt 8, everything just works out fine. Now there are random lags here and there on both of these phones. Which one you should buy? It's more like uh, if you are a geek and technically sound person, you might go for Redmi 2 because of the offered customization. Now, even if we keep that apart, Redmi 2 still has its advantage of processor, camera being a lot better. And it's also one of the thinnest phone around. Moto E on the other hand, isn't really bad for a customer who are novice and want to have simple phone. But at the end, I will say in my experience that take or leave the customization doesn't matter. The overall hardware of Redmi 2 is still much better compared to Moto E. So if you are looking for an Android phone at a 699 segment, 7000, 8000 segment, pick up Redmi 2, which is a much better phone. So guys, thanks for watching the video and hope you liked my opinion about my experiences. And if you did, give a thumbs up right there and we'll come up with more comparison in videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.